Action. Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So what's more exciting than reviewing a Vespa? Something new that's electric. I'm a total nerd. I love Teslas, uh, electric cars, uh, plug-in hybrid vehicles. I own that kind of stuff myself. Um, still a motorhead. I still got manual transmission, vintage, uh, pollution belching, two-stroke Vespas. But I'm all about the future and what new stuff we have coming. So here I have the new 2022 Piaggio One Active. So there's two models of the scooter. There's the Piaggio One to get to it, which is about 30 mile an hour top speed. And you have the Active and it does in the 40s, about 40, 44 is what the top speed I've gotten it up to. Uh, performs really nice. Um, pretty excited about this scooter because I think it's the first quality electric scooter that's out on the market. There's been a lot of electric scooters on the market and I've had the chance to ride them. We've sold several of them over the years at Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego. And to be honest with you, the quality is just always something to be said for. And they're always from New up and coming manufacturers, you got Gen Z, they're completely gone. If one part fails on it, the scooter is scrap. Well, this is the first scooter that we have available from a reputable major manufacturer. It's been around for years and years, since the 40s, you know, they've been making scooters. So they're here to stay. They're using standardized parts, like the new battery that's in this is a new standard that's shared between Honda and Yamaha as well. And I think that's really important for the adoption of electric scooters. Kind of like electric cars, there's some turmoil on the charging technologies, the voltages, uh, the things are still trying to get figured out to make a standard because whether you like it or not, the old gasoline engine is just gonna be like the horse and buggy. It's gonna be gone in, I would say, 20, 30 years from now. So the manufacturers are still trying to figure that out and I think Piaggio has nailed it on the new Piaggio one, especially the active. I always like something that's a little faster. Of course, they're not quite to the performance level of a Vespa 300. You would rate this in between a 50 cc gas scooter. That's about 30, 35 mile an hour and not quite what a 125 does. So it's not quite the same power as a 125, but it's perfectly adequate for city streets. Um, taking on highway, eh, it's not gonna happen. So let's get right to it. I'll talk about the scooter, starting from the front, moving all the way to the back. I'll show you the battery, talk about the tech specs. Uh, look for the next video coming out. I'm gonna actually take it on a range test and take it on a good ride and have some GoPro footage of me actually riding around, show you what it does. The most redeeming factor of the Vespa and Piaggio electric scooters is they have something that nearly none of the other manufacturers have, and that is storage. So unlock it and look under here and it's a very generous storage bay. It also contains the battery. You can kind of see the shape of the scooter. Uh, they kind of got the battery. It's a long vertical battery format. And I'm going to remove the battery and show you what that's all about. So it weighs about 35 pounds, it's removable. You can either leave it in place and charge the scooter with the battery in place and it's got a little spot to route your cord. Or ideally with a lot of electric scooters is maybe you're in an apartment or you're in your office building, you could take the battery with you and just plug it into a standard household outlet to charge the battery. So let me show you how that's done. So you got a 35 pound battery. It's not exactly light, but it's definitely something that you can lift. This is the new standardized battery that's gonna be used in up and coming Yamaha and Honda models. They've standardized the electrical connector. They've standardized the size of it and the voltage architecture. So this class of scooter uses a 48 volt uh, architecture. There's some scooters that do go a little faster. They'll use a 60 volt, but right now there's not really any really fast electric scooters that compete with a 300 cc or larger scooter. BMW in the past has had one. Obviously they failed at it. They stopped selling that scooter. Um, but I think the urban market is probably where the majority of electric scooters are going to be sold. 
Um, it's definitely taken off in China. The mobility on small electric scooters in China is like huge, bigger than any other part of the world. So it's very nice to see a European com company getting into the game of electric scooters. The biggest pitfall of many of the mainstream Chinese manufacturers are just not built to the level of quality where you find in a Western made scooter. You know, I'm talking Piaggio or even Honda Yamaha. They're excellent scooters. We don't sell them here, but um, just everything about it just feels much higher quality than like, for instance, the NIUs that are sold here in North America. This whole battery case is aluminum. It's not like a plastic housing. It's just built nicer. The plastic finishes are nicer on it. And even the connector, the new has got this like kind of rubbery connector you got to fight with. It's got this really nice gold pin. It almost like a military grade connector. You know, it's not metal on the lock, but you just push it right on here. It makes a really nice distinct snap. You give it a little quick twist and it pulls right off. Real simple to use, very secure. And that's both on the scooter and the charger. And even the charger, I'll jump to the charger right here. Uh, it's not the fastest charger in the market. Um, you're looking at about a 500 watt charger. Uh, FY for the nerd stats on the battery is 2.3 kilowatt hours is with this capacity of the battery. For reference, you got a Model 3 Tesla that's about 75 kilowatt hours or you got my plug-in hybrid that I currently drive as my four-wheeler and it's got 17 kilowatt hours. So kind of shows you um, the size difference of what these scooter batteries are versus a car battery. Obviously, huge car batteries are very difficult to lift. Uh, lithium ion technology, but the charger, it's all made of aluminum. It's got this little handle on it. It's got a integral cooling fan when it gets warm, if I don't drop it here, and it's about 500 watts. So you can charge this battery if it's all the way dead to fully charge around five hours, approximately five hours on 110 volts. So it's got the standard 110 volt plug on it. So, you know, if you're at the office for your work or you're at home, it's definitely gonna charge in that period. Um, of course, everybody asks the range on the scooter. Uh, you can plan on getting anywhere from 30 to 50 miles of range on the scooter. It completely depends on how you ride it. If you're gonna uh, operate it in the sport mode all the time, you're kind of gonna be on the lower end of the range. If you ride it easy in the econo mode, which is, in my eyes, extremely slow, um, 18 miles an hour if you're in the econo mode. I don't know where you use that except for tight urban areas. Uh, not too useful here in North America, but 30 miles is a total usable range. Uh, you might think, oh, well, a gas scooter goes 100 miles. It's not the same thing. Uh, the plan is to charge this battery every day or maybe every two days, every three days. Uh, maybe your commute's five miles each way. So you could just count on commuting two days and then bring the battery in. Uh, for instance, I live a little further away. So my commute's maybe 12 miles each way. So uh, I would probably play it safe and charge it every day because bringing the battery down to zero and bringing all the way up to 100, that puts more wear and tear on the battery. Um, if you cannot bring it down to the lowest capacity, it's gonna last a little bit longer, give you a longer service life. Um, these, these electric scooter batteries, they're usually engineered to last like 25,000 miles with the current technology batteries, 25, 30,000 miles. Um, and that's, that's you know, respectable. I rarely ever see 50cc scooters with that many miles. So, you know, that's a good 10, 15 years of use. Um, with regular use. And a scooter like this is very, very low maintenance. Essentially, there's no oils in it in these newer hub oil or hub drive electric uh, motor design. Uh, the Vespa Electrica has got kind of an unconventional motor that runs at higher RPMs and makes a little bit more noise and does have a hub oil. But you got the tires and the friction brakes. Those are pretty much the only maintenance items that you have on these scooters. So what does it take to start the scooter? It's a little different than the standard scooter. It's got a pretty awesome keyless fob system on this. Uh, unlike the news where there is an app that connects to it, which I do not like, um, there's already issues with app connect, you know, basically Internet of Things devices where it's connected to the world. I don't think that's appropriate for a scooter. Uh, it makes sense on a Tesla or something like that where you 
have maps and navigation in the screen. But uh, Scooter is connected to the Internet of Things where it can be shut down remotely or monitored by a third party, you know, NIU in China. Uh, this is kind of creepy. I'm not into that. This does not have any cellular modems or anything like that. Obviously, a downside, I guess, you can maybe recover it if somebody physically stole the thing, but um, I don't think that's really an issue. Um, knowing where you live and how to secure the thing is more important. So the key fob here, it's pretty cool. It's got a physical key as a backup. That will show you how it works in the ignition, and also you can pop the seat with this physical key if needed. For instance, if you don't have a battery in there and you latched it, you can't pop the seat or unlock it. But you got three buttons on here. Um, if you're an electric vehicle fan, you might wonder what this thing looks like. It looks like a key fob from a Tesla. It's almost a near identical shaped copy, but it's got the Piaggio on it. <laughs> Pretty funny. They just made it look like a car, just like the Tesla key fob. So you got the first button, that unlocks it, and you can hear a little solenoid that unlocks the steering. So if you had the steering locked, you can um, activate the switch there, and then you got the lock that shuts it off. And you can hear it clicks, locks up the scooter. So uh, the last button here isn't too useful unless you're in a sea of a bunch of other scooters. It makes a little siren noise um, so you can find your scooter. Um, but pretty much unlock and lock. And once you do that, you have the ignition switch. You just turn it on ready to go and ignition switch is multifunction. It will also pop the seat as long as it's unlocked. So you get access to the seat and you also could push it in, lock the steering. And once it's completely locked down, there's no turning any of the things. It's completely locked down. I think it's a pretty simple, elegant solution that's uh, simpler than the new keyless system that's found on the BV400 and definitely a lot simpler than the NIU system where it has a combination of an app that you can connect to the scooter and arm it and also a key fob along with a physical key that you still have to put in. I thought that's kind of, um, doesn't make sense. So what are you going to do? Pick one. But this uses a key fob to unlock and lock the system, uh, a physical uh, ignition switch, and there's also a backup key. So that's, I think, a pretty elegant solution, you know, to secure the scooter and gain access to it. Nice and simple. Cool thing, it comes with two of these, and it comes with two extra physical keys, too, even though they're integral into the key fob. So let's start with the front of the scooter. It's physically a pretty small size scooter. You can see behind me I have some of the other Piaggio products. If you want to kind of, if you've ridden other scooters, uh, ideally the Buddy 125, that's what this is physically real similar to. But the ergonomics are excellent on it. Uh, your knees aren't up in the handlebars like many other scooters that are kind of poorly engineered with a high floorboard. The floorboards are very low. Um, the seat height when it's off the stand is about 30 inches. So it's not the lowest scooter in this class, but it's pretty low. I think it's pretty easily rideable for a variety of people's shapes, you know, whether you're tall, short, big or small. Um, I think it's a pretty comfortable package for being a small physical package of a scooter here. So this scooter runs on the traditional 10 inch tires. Um, which is both a good and bad thing. You know, some of the electric scooters are running the larger size tires. The 10 inch tires, they definitely give you a more nimble feel. And that's pretty positive in a tight urban environment. But if you have pothole ridden streets, um, that sort of stuff, it could be to your disadvantage. But the scooter does run the tried and true classic Vespa trailing links single sided swing arm suspension. So you got the shock, you got the swing arm, they kind of leave it exposed. Unlike on the Vespas where you put the decorative co cover on there, you probably could put a Vespa cover so it says Vespa on it if you wanted to. It's got a disc brake up front. You wonder why there's two cables because it's a linked hydraulic brake system. So if you act on the right lever, it act activates the front. If you act on the left lever, you get a combination of both the rear and the front. Um, 
just to give you that extra security of getting maximum braking if you give a handful of the rear brake, you'll also add to the front. Um, makes it a little easier. There's no ABS system. I, d I don't know of any of the electric scooters that have ABS because they're all kind of lower speed vehicles. Um, the wheel's really, really cool looking. Um, is kind of a five spoke kind of techie design. They got the ye little yellow accent on it. So the Piaggio one comes in two different color combinations. This one's called Sunshine Mix. So it's got this titanium matte finish bodywork with yellow accents. And they carry on to the, the wheel as well, uh, all the way to the back. And the other one is Arctic Mix. And everything that's gray on this scooter would be like a gloss white, and all the yellow accents are kind of an ice blue. And then there's a special edition. Um, you can look at Piaggio USA to see the latest uh, offerings for the colors of the Piaggio One scooter. Price-wise, you're probably wondering what it runs. If you're going for the Active, which has better acceleration, higher top speed, you're looking at $43.99. If you're just looking for the base model, which has all the same stuff as this that I'm showing you, it's actually really hard to even tell the difference. Uh, just a standard Piaggio One that has a top speed of about 30 miles an hour goes for $29.99 is the MSRP. And if you're interested in purchasing one, I would suggest just pre-ordering one on the Piaggio USA website. Uh, the reason being is, as with all vehicles still, they're pretty, you know, there's uh, shortages and supply chain issues, so it's best to get a pre-order in, and pretty much it just allocates a unit that would normally just go to a dealership, it would be allocated for you. So uh, that's kind of the new norm with vehicles in general you know, pre-ordering them, whether it's a car or something like a scooter like this. All right, so here's the front view of the scooter. Very unique, different design. It's got twin LED headlights on there. I think it's pretty cool. Um, these little running lights are very, very cool with the little, like, hashes in them. Uh, the headlight, I can tell you, it works really good for a Vespa compared to any of the other LED lighting setups for this class of scooter, it's got a set of twin lights. You know, most of the time they'll be non-symmetrical. So one will be a high beam, one will be a low beam, but these are symmetrical and they actually function really good at night. Lighting is excellent on this. Turn signals, you can see their LED as well, but they got the kind of rabbit ears. They're made really, really well, especially when compared to the news that has some pretty flimsy garbage on them. Uh, was not impressed with that setup that they came up with for the U.S. market. But for this scooter, they definitely upped the game. Everything, the fi finish is just really nice on all the pieces, the plastic, um, how everything's assembled. There's nothing that's like, will bend away. You know, it flexes and will return. Just built to a level that I haven't really seen on any other electric scooters. All right, so now we're at the cockpit of uh, the Piaggio one here. So it's got this really nice looking color LCD assembly. It's, it's not like a TFT, like, so it's got this, the, the segments, so it does change colors, kind of similar to when I talked about the new in uh, GTS, they had a similar setup with the same kind of colors to it. Uh, very nice, there's two buttons here for mode. Uh, you could go between a trip odometer A, trip odometer B, your range, which is always show, shown right there, uh, haven't turned it on yet, um, your average watt hours per mile, and that's really high because everybody just wants to ride at full throttle right now to test it out on the 11 miles that we've done on it. Um, but there's several different options you could cycle through. Uh, the funniest one happens to be a happy face. It just tells you everything's okay with it. Um, and to start the scooter, you got a kill switch just like a normal gasoline scooter, it shuts it down, but you could cycle through three different modes. It's got reverse, a really low speed reverse. It's got sport, which gives you the maximum top speed, and you got eco, which I find is not useful in North America, 18 miles an hour. Obviously, you can get exceptional range with it going at that kind of speed. Um, and once you select the mode, you just hold the map button until the ready comes on. No different than any electric car or even a hybrid car. Um, 
and it kind of averages your range, you know, based on your riding. So, you know, everybody's riding it really hard um, on these first 11 miles of test ride, so your range is a little bit on the lower side. Obviously, if you're going to ride it more uh, normal, you know, more like topping out and averaging 25, 30 on city streets and not full throttle all the time, you're going to get range that maybe is closer to the 51 miles of maximum range that they have to offer with that 2.3 kilowatt hour battery that's included with this. You got outside temperature, you got your time in military, you got some basic indicators that are nice and bright that you can see for your turn signals. Um, you just push to cancel. You got a horn. This is also your mode switch, so you could change the trip odometer right from here. You know, your trip B, you know, how many miles you've been running it, and so on, high beam, low beam. And you may ask what this little extra button is here. It does have a four-way hazard. Pretty remarkable because you got to move all the way up to the BV400 and the MP3 range of Piaggio's to have the four-way hazards. I always thought that was kind of a nice feature to put on a scooter, um, but they have it on this Piaggio one here. Um, you got your front brake and you got your rear brake that also gives you a combination of 100% um, to the rear and another probably 25-30% to the front. It's got a kind of a traditional handlebar design with a cast aluminum clamp up at the top, stainless steel hardware. Like I said, everything about this, you can't really see it all in the video, everything's just made to a higher level. Stainless steel hardware here, uh, all the plastics a much nicer feeling and textured plastic. Not like the cheap stuff where it just feels brittle, looks kind of like real waxy and low quality. I've just seen that for too long on electric scooters that have been available in North America. Just the lower, just the lower quality offering. And they should be on par with the high quality offerings, such as something like a Liberty 150 or 50. They're just built to a nicer quality standard than the cheap stuff. You got your battery percentage, and once it's ready, you can kind of see it's not going to get to the maximum power. The green is going to be your regen. And um, so you can kind of see how that all works. You can throttle it, you know, hits about 45 mile an hour maximum top speed. Uh, you have to find like kind of slight downhill will hit that top speed. But on level ground, it does about 37 miles an hour is what I found. Um, and that's with it in a ready state. So it's ready to go. You wonder why I'm running it. Uh, the scooter does have a center stand. That's the way most scooters are. You put them up on the center stand so the rear tire is up off the ground. So that's how I'm safely able to operate the motor. Um, definitely don't want to push it off the stand in that mode. Moving on down to the ignition switch and the bag hook. Bag hook's always a nice feature. It's a very sturdy little bag hook. You can put like a grocery bag. There's a generous amount of space in between the leg shields where you put your feet. Uh, the ignition switch is pretty neat. It's all lit, so it looks pretty techy and cool. I wish they do that on all the other uh, Piaggio range and Vespa range of scooters. It just looks really good. And while it's blinking, you can also put it in lock position, just so it lets you know that it's armed. It will automatically arm uh, when you walk away with a key fob, if I recall, or you could just push the button, and once the lights go out, you can't turn this. It locks up the ignition switch. So to unlock it, once it's blinking, lets you know it's ready to be turned on. You can unlock the steering, you know, so now you can wheel the scooter around and turn the ignition on. And to do the seat, you just give it a slight push and um, turn it back towards the lock and it will undo the seat. So pretty neat mechanism. Um, one of the best features of this is if you need to access it with a physical key. And like I said, includes uh, two physical keys and two keys that pull out of the key fob. So you put this thing in here, and for instance, say it's locked, you know, with the key in there, you can bypass the key fob. So a physical key that goes way into the well, there's, um, so there's a way of get, gaining access to the scooter if everything electric or your battery's completely dead or missing from the scooter, uh, still can access the seat. And there's also an extra lock on the side of the bodywork to open the seat manually. 
separately and then you just put that little shutter. But normal operation, you probably never use that. You just use the fob as long as the fob has a good battery in it. Um, you know, you use the buttons to activate the scooter and unlock it and so on. All right, so to move the scooter around, pretty easy. There's no rack on it. It gives it a really sporty appearance. I'll show the tail light kind of at the end. That looks really nice on this. But they kind of did a neat idea for grabbing the scooter. So a lot of times you don't have a grab handle or rack and they're difficult to like kind of physically grab onto the scooter. Well, they kind of integrated a little bit of a grab handle on both the left and the right side of the seat. So pretty much you just give it a little rock and it pops right off the stand. Uh, alternately, you could you can rock it off the stand when, when you're straddled on it. So I'm about 5'7 and a 32 inch inseam, no problem at all. But if you're a couple inches shorter, I think you still can easily ride the scooter. And my favorite part about this electric scooter it doesn't have that obnoxiously high fly floorboard like most other electric scooters or just poorly engineered scooters in general. You see my knee has plenty of distance between the handlebars, um, no problems there. So it's just a nice ergonomic position. The seat's probably a little small if you're going to ride it two up, but it is possible to ride two up. They do give you a set of passenger pegs, you know, so nice aluminum passenger pegs that are real strong. I wouldn't be surprised in some ways it's more comfortable than some of the Vespa models for riding two up, but it is physically a smaller little scooter, probably not really intended for two up operation all the time, but it is possible. Right here is a USB charger, so if you put like something like a RAM mount or SP Connect style phone case, you can charge your phone from this USB uh, thing and use navigation on your phone while you have it right there mounted off the mirror. Several solutions for putting a phone on your scooter. But very easy to straddle, it's comfortable. I'll take it on a ride tomorrow, so look out for that next video. I'll do a ride video with the range test and all. And to put it up on the center stand, just give it a little easy little rock. Doesn't take much at all. And of course, a little stand like this is the most secure way of um, parking the scooter. And if you're looking for added security, of course, you always want to lock your steering column because at that point, it's pretty difficult to wheel it off. Uh, the scooter does have a little bit more weight to it compared to something like this small NIU M Plus where you can Somebody as strong can lift it and walk away with it almost. Take it for a wheelbarrow uh, ride. Um, but uh, probably a little bit, it weighs a little bit less than the NGTS that runs dual batteries. So the NGTS does have a slight advantage by having a dual battery setup that's 60 volt. But I feel like this is just built so much better in quality and get, offers similar performance. I think this is a better value for what you get at the price point this is at. So right here is a hook to put like a padlock on or a chain if you did need to secure it. Moving on to the back, uh, this is pretty interesting. They kind of have this gloss insert in the seat. Kind of is deceiving, kind of looks like the bodywork. Um, the painted finish, you can see there's like a little bit of a pearl finish in the, the paint. But moving on down here, all this stuff is aluminum. This is a swing arm. It uh, has this kind of unique hump right here and that kind of is the battery going pretty far down. The battery drops really far down in the frame, which is a good thing because at 35 pounds of weight, you want to have that as low as you can. Because if you can get all the weight, you know, which is mo mostly the hub motor that's got some weight behind it, the battery and the frame, and you keep all that weight low, it's going to be a better handling scooter. Um, the frame on this, you can just definitely tell it's a lot more rigid compared to most of the electric scooters or even something like a Buddy 125 it got a pretty flexy frame. Um, even though it's on 10 inch tires, it's going to give you a much more solid ride. So I, it just, the quality of the ride that this delivers is, is a lot better than many, anything else, many other electric scooters close to this price point. So here we got the rear view of the scooter. Kind of show you how that looks. Tail lights, all LED. FYI, all the lighting on this scooter is LED, including the license light. Pretty cool looking tail light, kind of like a wing. And it's very integrated with the bodywork. Pretty nice. They do have the pod turn signals. They are nice and flexy. They're not going to break off or bend away. 
Um, nice and bright LED turn signals, tons of contrast to them. But looking at the rear, it's got a dual shock setup, kind of for added um, rigidity of the swing arm. You know, so it works very, very good. But just an example of the quality aspect of the scooter. This little um, floating kind of license plate holder and turn signal holder, underneath they bolted plastic. So there's no raw unfinished areas of the scooter. Everything's just finished really nicely. You know, they took the added effort of putting another molded plastic piece under here. Not really showing it, but kind of keeps dirt from packing in there. I've seen other scooters where you start seeing some exposed wiring or just some raw of parts of the metal um, frame that would support the license frame. It's just kind of eh, a little bit tacky in my eyes. So just like the front, the rear's got a mechanical disc brake. There is regenerative braking whenever you drop the throttle all the way down. And you can see those three green bars on the instrument. Kind of shows you it's giving you a mild regenerative braking. For instance, going down a hill or something is where that would come into play. Um, it maybe gives you a couple extra percent of battery life over the whole entire use of the scooter, but that's kind of one of the extras that you get out of an electric vehicle, the regenerative braking, and the efficiencies are just so much better than you'd ever find even in the most efficient gas scooter. Um, you know, essentially, if you're riding this thing easy, it's taking two kilowatt hours to go nearly 50 miles. That's pretty good. And if you do the calculations, all the math to figure out what a gas scooter gets, I'm talking a 50cc gas scooter that you're riding similar, it might be getting 100 miles a gallon, which is excellent. Keep in mind here in California, gas is like seven bucks a gallon now, you know, as of 2022. Uh, you charge this on cheap electricity for 50 miles. Uh, the cheap electricity in California, if you charge it after midnight, you put a timer on that thing, you're talking 10, 11 cents a kilowatt. If you're charging on solar, it's you know, you're just using the extra solar. So it's costing you 20 cents to go 50 miles. It's incredible. That's like, I, I don't know, there's not, you know, electric cars, there's no gas vehicle even comes close to that. So if you're looking to save some money, you charge at off peak electricity rate, it's costing you pennies to operate this thing per mile. Pretty incredible. So thanks for hanging in for that long session of robot talking about the latest and greatest in electric scooters offered by Vespa Motorsport and Piaggio. The Piaggio One, uh, it's been in the making for several years and they still have the Vespa Electrica that came out several years ago. I've done reviews of the Vespa Electrica. Um, this is pretty much the next generation of the Piaggio electric architecture. And I feel they kind of nailed it with this one using a standardized battery, a high quality smaller size scooter that's great for an urban environment or just to be around town. And you may think 30 to 50 miles is not that great a range, but for the typical use of the scooter and when you charge it, you'll find that's actually more convenient than making a pit stop at a gas station to put a gallon and a half in a gas scooter every week. You know, charging it three times a week, hmm. Not that difficult. I mean, you just plug it right in. Versus busting out the credit card, put a gallon in, it's gonna cost you seven bucks. You know. But thanks for watching. Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. If you're interested in a scooter, I suggest going to the Piaggio USA website. You can put a pre-order in and find more specifications. Look out for my next video because I'm gonna take it on a range test and a longer test ride and talk about the ride qualities of the scooter. And feel free to see what we have in inventory at vespamotorsport.com.